In the videos in this section, we're going to be talking about facts, how we use the term fact in scientific vocabulary, and how we use it in ordinary language use. In this video, we'll focus on epistemically loaded uses of the term fact. So recall this diagram that describes how most people rank the terms fact, law, theory, and hypothesis on a scale that represents the degree of evidential support that is assumed by the use of the term. All of these uses are what we're calling epistemically loaded uses of these terms. The term fact obviously ranks very high on this scale. To describe a claim or a belief as a fact is to imply, at the very least, that we have very good reason to think it's true. But what do we actually mean when we use the term fact in this way? Let's look at a few informal examples. One way we use the term is in expressions like, it's just a fact that, or the fact of the matter is. Here's a quote from Hillary Clinton made during her 2016 campaign. It's just a fact that if you're a young African-American man and you do the same thing as a young white man, you are more likely to be arrested, charged, convicted, and incarcerated. So we've got to address the systemic racism in our criminal justice system. And she could just as easily have said, the fact of the matter is, if you're a young African-American man, and so on. So what communicative function is this expression? It's just the fact that serving. What does it add to the claim? Well, when you preface what you're going to say with, it's just a fact that, you're signaling to your audience that what you're about to say next is not or should not be up for debate, that its truth is established, that it would be unreasonable to challenge it or question it. Why? Because what you're about to say is a fact. The word carries that connotation. And this really is the heart of the epistemically loaded usage of the word fact. Another example, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I ask that you avoid speculation and base your judgment on the facts of the case as they've been presented to you. What are the facts? The facts are claims that do not invite speculation. Why? Because there's a consensus agreement that they're true, or at least enough agreement that they're not up for debate in this context. Now, we use the term in a similar way to talk about scientific facts. Here's a screenshot from a New Zealand website called Science Kids talking about solar system facts. The text under the title says, check out these fun solar system facts for kids. Learn about the sun, asteroid belt, terrestrial planets, gas giants, and a range of other interesting facts about the solar system. And then it lists a bunch of bullet points like the ones shown here. Now, what does it mean to call this list of claims facts? Well, note that they're asserted without qualification. The solar system formed 4.6 billion years ago, period. These are claims that are regarded as so well supported by the scientific community that you can just assert them as being uncontroversially true. So what is the epistemically loaded sense of the word fact? Here's a definition. A community of language users will call a claim a fact if it makes an assertion that is regarded as so well established and supported by the evidence that it would not be reasonable to question or doubt it. This is the way the evolutionary biologist Stephen Jay Gould uses the term fact when he talks about the fact of evolution. For Gould, a claim counts as a fact if it is, I quote, confirmed to such a degree that it would be perverse to withhold provisional assent. Assent here just means agreement, and perverse in this context means irrational. Uh, once you're familiar with the relevant evidence, it would be irrational to disagree with the claim that all organisms on Earth are descended from a common ancestor. It's provisional agreement, though, meaning for the time being. Given what we know right now, it would be irrational to challenge this claim. But that doesn't mean that uh, the evidence couldn't appear in the future that could give us reasons to change our minds. Here's another statement from a scientist, Herman Muller, expressing the same idea. When we say a thing is a fact, we only mean that its probability is an extremely high one, so high that we are not bothered by doubt about it and are ready to act accordingly. Now let's go back to our official definition, which I'll leave up here for reference. I want to point out some features of this usage of the term fact that are important to appreciate, especially when we contrast it with the epistemically neutral definition that we'll be giving shortly. First point. 
when we talk about facts in this epistemically loaded sense, we're not really talking about the world. We're talking about our beliefs about the world. So to say that evolution is a fact in this sense is to make a claim about the attitude that a particular community of language users takes toward this statement, this assertion. It's to say that among mainstream scientists, evolution is regarded as a fact. This is not the same as saying that evolution is actually true of the world. This is saying rather that a community of people believe there is overwhelming evidence that it is true. That's what the use of the word fact is signaling. Second point, what claims are regarded as facts will differ across historical periods and across different communities. So facts in this sense are relative. For example, if the claim under consideration is that the earth is motionless at the center of the cosmos, within the scientific community today, that is not a fact. Anyone raised in a modern scientific worldview believes the earth rotates on its axis, that it moves through space, and that it's not at the center of the cosmos. But back in 900 AD, in Europe, in the Middle Ages, the overwhelming consensus was that this is true, that this is a fact. Back then, everyone believed this was true, and they had very good reason to think it was true at the time, given what they knew at the time. So in this epistemically loaded sense of the term, this isn't a fact for us today, but it was a fact for people living in Europe in 900 AD. This highlights the difference between saying that a claim is a fact in this epistemically loaded sense and simply saying that it's true. We're not saying that it was true in 900 AD that the earth was motionless and at the center of the cosmos. We're saying that at the time people believed it was true and believed it in such a way that it wasn't reasonable to challenge it at that time. So this is the epistemically loaded sense of the word fact. We use it all the time this way. Scientists use it all the time this way. But this isn't the only way we use the word fact. In the next video, we're going to look at why we also need an epistemically neutral sense of the word fact.